Hey guys, welcome back to Red Fox Garage. Uh, today I want to go over a few uh, Holly fundamental kind of beginner problems that some of you might run up against. Um, it's all stuff that I experienced in installing it and trying to get it to work. Um, the Holly product is really good. It's intuitive. It's a lot better than some of the other things that I've worked with. Um, but you know, it's it's covering a lot of a lot of ground um, and you know they do a pretty good job not knowing uh, the skill level of the person who's going to be installing it and trying to tune it and all you know uh, but anyway these are some some things that I've had problems with in some instances they took me a couple hours to a couple days to to work through uh, so they won't be all applicable to every every installation or every product but if, for beginners this is a this is worth watching so if you find something in here that's useful that helps you out please like like and subscribe if you've got snafus that you've run up against uh yeah leave me a comment and maybe we can provide some help because these aren't the only gotchas i've come across but these are just some of the big ones that they kind of ate up a lot of time so let's get to it Got you number one. This little guy right here. Your IAC plug. Uh, depending which harness you buy, you might get one that's wired for an LS, or you might get one that's wired for a Chrysler. Um, I spent a good bit of time Trying to figure out why my IAC was doing nothing. The harness I bought was wired for a Chrysler, which this AccuFab throttle body here comes with the, the GM style. So, um, you know, if you were a professional, this probably would, wouldn't sneak past you, but when you're a hobbyist and doing this stuff on the side, um, you know, you don't always know. And I spent a lot of time trying to trying to find out what was going on, researching forums, um, looking through websites, trying to figure it out. In the end, I had the Dodge style. I needed the GM style. So don't fall for this one. Depending what harness you get, just make sure that your IAC is the right one for the wiring that you have, or vice versa. You, I changed the wiring to get it to work. So um, it's a pretty easy fix. Uh, I'll, I'll link to a website below in the description that will basically give you the schematics to, to make it easy. Um, so don't fall for that one. Uh, number two, gotcha battery voltage. Um, I, I'm sure if you read about the Holly stuff, and they're always recommending that you don't try to start the vehicle when the the battery voltage is low and i generally try to abide by that but we all know how it is you get in a hurry uh, you want to start the car it's been sitting for a while the battery's not at full charge and eh, most of the time you get by with it um but i am evidence that you don't always get by with it uh, I, the car had been sitting for quite a while and uh, I was just trying to get it started, figured well if I can get it started it'll, it'll charge. Um, so I basically cranked on it until it just clicked. So no big deal, I didn't think, think much of it. Um, I took the battery out, charged it up for just overnight and uh, <clears throat> put it back in the car. Turn the key and nothing happened. No, no fuel pump, no anything. Um, the laptop wouldn't connect to the HP anymore. Um, so I was kind of hosed. Um, figured I'd blown it up somehow. I really didn't didn't know, but uh, so I did a lot of testing and I come to find out that I was getting the trigger wire on the relay. Uh, was only putting out five volts so it wasn't enough to kick the the fuel pump relay on or the it's the injector drivers too i think um so 
I figured I'd bricked it and it was junk. But I called Holly Tech and uh, I think I talked to a guy named Ryan, a nice guy. Uh, he said, just flash your firmware. And I said, well, the laptop doesn't talk to it. It can't even see it right now. So luckily I own the touch screen and uh, you can update the firmware through the, through the touch screen or basically reflash it. Um, so I went that route and it actually fixed it. So no brick, yay. So by using the touch screen, I was able to update the firmware or flash the firmware. Uh, I've, I'll link to a video below that I've got that it's basically a, a way to update the firmware. It's a, just a step-by-step -step instructions, but using the the SD card and the touch screen is included in the video, so that may be helpful. Um, like I said, that scared me. I did not want to buy a new HP or even send it back to Holly. So, uh, but it did it did get me down for a couple days before I was able to resolve the issue. So, anyway, keep your battery charged. I keep mine on a, a battery tender. I, that that seems to be okay. Um, it keeps it so it's always at a full charge. I don't drive the car sometimes for a couple weeks at a time. So yeah, keep your battery voltage up and don't crank it till it clicks because the results won't be good. So this third one, the gotcha number three, is a bit more Ford specific. Um, and for that matter, like the five liter type stuff. Um, but might, this might look familiar to some of you. This is a, a TFI harness for the Holly, which they do sell. Um, I don't recommend even attempting to try to get the TFI to work. Could have been just bad luck on my part, but the more research I've done, um, nobody's having a lot of luck with it. So I, I don't even remember what all I experienced. I just know that it was inconsistent. It did weird things. Um, and the more research I did, the more I found that it seemed to be TFI related. Um, I switched over to the Holly Dual Sync um, distributor, which seemed to be the easiest and cheapest at the time. Um, and it's been basically flawless, no problems at all with it. I know a lot of people jump to the crank trigger stuff and that's, that's good and, and coil on plug and stuff. Um, I just, just didn't and I don't really see any need to now. Um, so anyway, especially if you're starting from scratch, like uh, if you've got a TFI working, good for you. Uh, but uh, if you're starting from scratch um, and you're gonna be buying this harness and, and all that anyway, I would I would skip straight to the, the dual sync or some kind of crank trigger setup um, and save yourself a lot of hassle. I uh, got you number four, uh, keep a backup of your global file somewhere other than your PC and in your ECU. Um, hard drives crash, um, HPs and dominators occasionally freak out, lose your global. I mean, that's not common, but it can happen. It's happened to me. So you don't want to be left without a global file. You know, I spent a lot of time setting mine up, getting all the injector data and the ignition data and, you know, just getting your target air fuels, all that stuff set up, and you don't want to lose that and have to redo it. Just back up your global, put it somewhere, SD card, USB stick, on the cloud, wherever. Just back it up. Okay, number five. This is a bit of a, a just a, a word of warning. Uh, when you're wiring your car, uh, take, take the time at the beginning, map it out, have a plan in mind, know what's gonna go where, where you're going to terminate wires, um, you know, don't don't be splicing wires together. Just just get a long enough wire to get where it needs to go. Um, if you do have to splice anything, do it as appropriately as you can. Um, depending where it's at, I like to either solder the wire or use high quality connectors. I don't like these little cheap butt connectors, um, but. Uh, in other cases, I've used uh, some of the, the Delphi connectors with the pins. Those make a pretty nice thing. If you've got something you're going to need to separate in the future, uh, that's, a, that's not a bad route to go. But, yeah, take your time with that and pay.
pay really close attention to your grounds and make sure that they're clean and uh, appropriate wire sizes and and again any splices or crimps make sure that they're good um, I use heat shrink whenever I can even if it's not exposed to weather uh, make sure you've got a good big ground going from your battery all the way to your engine block um, like welding cable or something probably the bigger the better so make sure that's all your connections are clean because I promise you it's a lot easier to do it right the first time than come back and figure out what the one thing you did wrong um, spending days weeks trying to troubleshoot some intermittent thing because you don't have a ground tight so take your time um, make sure that stuff's all well thought out all right last but not least we want to talk about um, closed loop parameters and learn parameters um, it seems like by default that enable closed loop was not enabled on mine. So basically it's never going to start learning if you don't enable that. Um, if you check that, it will go into closed loop and you can see all these check boxes. I mean, you can read those and, uh, determine which ones you want to set. I think I, I put my coolant temperature up to a certain temp, I think 160 or something. Um, before it goes into closed loop. So anyway, on mine, I don't believe that that was by default enabled, so it wasn't learning uh, for a while. So the system's pretty amazing. If you can get it in the ballpark where it'll run, I mean, it, w it will learn over time and, and, and dial it in as long as your target air fuels are all good. So um, you need that, and then um, you also need the the base fuel learn enabled checked. Um, so again, you can see the enable RPM to enter learn and enable TPS to enter learn. Uh, I don't know that I have those set to anything. This isn't my tune. This is just a box tune, but um, I don't know if I have those set to anything, but you definitely need this base fuel learn enabled checked. So if you get those, you, it, your your HP should go into learn mode and uh, start populating your learn table and offsetting your your fuel values to get you to your target air fuel. So that wraps up this video. Those are just some of the things that I've um, had issues with along the way and spent some time trying to figure out. So I hope that those are, will be helpful to some of you. Um, if you found any of this helpful, please like and subscribe. Um, leave some comments if there's anything that you've experienced too. Um, we can commiserate on that. Uh, but over, all in all, the Holly product is really good. And like I said, pretty intuitive. So not, not at all am I down on the Holly stuff. Um, most of the problems are, or a good many of the problems are self-induced. So <clears throat> take your time when you're on your install and uh, good luck. Thanks a lot for watching.